I'm Patrick Byers, Horticulture Field Specialist with the University of Missouri Extension, and I'm excited to be delivering today's fruit report for our online newsletter. The report will be in two parts. We'll first discuss Japanese beetle and its implication for commercial fruit growers in Missouri, and then we'll talk about some of the activities happening in fruit plantings across the state of Missouri. The Japanese beetle is a non-native invasive insect. Uh, originally found in Asia, primarily Japan and China, it was accidentally introduced into the United States in 1916 in New Jersey. It has since spread across the eastern U.S. and is now found across the country. It is univoltine in Missouri, meaning that it has one generation per year. And as mentioned, it's widespread in the eastern U.S. and is now a pest across all of Missouri. The Japanese beetle life cycle spans a year. The grub stage begins when the female beetles, once mated, excavate a tunnel in the earth and lay their eggs in July and August. The eggs hatch, the grubs begin to feed, primarily in grassy areas and pastures, turf areas, lawn, uh, lawns, golf courses. They then move deeper into the soil to overwinter, and then they pupate and emerge as adults, beginning in May and early June in Missouri. The numbers will peak in July, and then by the end of July and early August, mating has occurred and the number of adults found drops sharply. It is a relatively recent pest issue in Missouri, but is now found across the state. Why is Japanese beetle a problem? The first consideration is that the number of adults can be very high and the populations can be at the point where they are definitely damaging. And this can be an issue in, in every year. It's a generalist feeder with over 300 species of host plants, which includes most of the commercially important fruit plants grown in Missouri. It's a non-native insect. There are a few naturally occurring predators or other natural controls to help bring the numbers of the insect into control. It can cause damage both as a larva and adult. The adult damage is related to feeding on foliage and blossoms and fruit, whereas the damage caused by the larva is to the root systems of plants. The economic impact of Japanese beetle is considerable. It's estimated to be 450 million uh, from the standpoint of annual prevention efforts uh, in the uh, United States. And the damage can be not only to uh, fruit crops, but also to ornamentals and to turf. It is possible to monitor for Japanese beetle. The uh, pheromone that the Japanese beetle female releases to draw males to her has been synthesized and packaged into pheromone applicators. And there are also floral-based pheromone attractants that are quite effective against both sexes of the Japanese beetle. This slide shows a typical Japanese beetle pheromone monitoring trap. The yellow fin part at the top contains the pheromone, as we can see in the smaller picture. The pheromone is in two parts, the round circular part at the top, and then the smaller rubber dispenser cap below. The brown circular part releases the floral attractant and the uh, rubber cap releases the uh, female sex attractant. The green part of the trap is where the beetles are captured. So Japanese beetle trap catches began in May in Missouri. This is some data collected in Greene County, Missouri in 2012. The uh, first trap catch was on May 7th and the numbers remained quite low until we moved into early June. And in fact, beginning June 4th is when we began to see much higher trap catches. And by the time we had reached mid-June, we were catching over a thousand beetles per trap per day. So this is a fairly typical uh, pattern of emergence, although the actual time at which they emerge can vary by as much as two weeks in a given year. And typically emergence begins in Southern and Southeast Missouri uh, earlier than it does in Central or Northern Missouri. This is an interesting slide that, that illustrates trap catches over three different years in Greene County. Uh, these are trap catches for 2009, 2011, and 2013. The uh, 2009 catches and the 2011 catches are fairly similar. They're uh, described in, with the orange and the yellow curves. And across the bottom of the, uh, the uh, graph is trap uh, catch date, again, beginning in May and running through August. And then along the y-axis, the vertical axis, we see the number of insects captured per day in the traps. And again, similar curves, although the, uh, the peaks uh, move, move a, a bit during the season. What's very interesting is to look at the 2013 trap catches, which is the green line, and notice the very few beetles were caught in 2013. 
And entomologists have theorized that this is the result of a dry year previous. The 2012 year was a drought year in Missouri, particularly in July and August. And entomologists suggest that the female mated beetles had difficulty excavating tunnels into the soil to lay their eggs. And those eggs that were laid died upon desiccation. So that the trap catches in 2013, after the drought year of 2012, were much lower. Japanese beetle management uh, for conventional farmers is straightforward. There's a wide range of labeled insecticides that do a good job of managing Japanese beetles. Uh, details are found in, in the Midwest Pest Management Guide. Oftentimes insecticides that are applied for other pests on fruit crops provide adequate control of, of Japanese beetle, but not all insecticides will control Japanese beetle. So it's important to check the guide to get a feel for which insecticides are effective against the Japanese beetle. The guide is available in hard copy, and it's also available online through the website here on the slide. Organic management strategies for Japanese beetle is a bit more complicated. Uh, traditionally, the uh, strategies that have been used include hand removal, and this is effective against the early emergent scouts. And it is important to focus on the scouts because the early arrivals then begin to feed and in response to the feeding, damaged plants release chemicals that draw more beetles to the, uh, the feeding site. The early scouts also relief, release aggregating pheromones, which will draw more beetles into the feeding site as well. Biological control agents, as mentioned before, there are very few naturally occurring biological control agents that can address population numbers as high as can be found with Japanese beetle. But this does offer some degree of management through a, a uh, managing the, the grub phase, the grub portion of the life cycle using things such as milky spore or uh, uh, predaceous nematodes. Organic insecticides are certainly a possibility, but an area that we're particularly interested in in Missouri is the area of mass trapping, where we use traps as a means of control. Very interesting research work at Lincoln University in the early 2000s demonstrated the efficacy of mass trapping for Japanese beetle control. And it's based upon the use of pheromone attractants, both the floral-based attractants and the sex pheromone-based attractants. Uh, this shot, this photo shows three different types of traps that were used in the, the early years of this particular research. And we can see in the center, we have a standard trap, that same yellow top that we saw earlier, paired with a steel mesh netting sock and then we see two large volume traps, a bin that is ventilated and a non-ventilated bin, uh, which were used in the, the early part of the research. Efforts now with mass trapping of Japanese beetle are focused on the ventilated bin approach, which we'll talk about here in the next slide. To develop a mass trapping system for Japanese beetle, the uh, trap that has been uh, proven to be effective in the Lincoln University work is based upon a 32 gallon bin with um, uh, a lid on. The uh, bottom of the bin is drilled with holes to allow rainwater to, to be released. And then two ports are cut into the, uh, the bin and then covered with screen. This allows for ventilation so that, that uh, beetles don't uh, immediately die and make the trap less effective to incoming beetles. Now it is important, of course, that the uh, trap be constructed so the beetles cannot escape from it. The uh, lid, of course, is, is sealed over the, the trap and then the uh, the uh, screens are cemented in place. A hole is then drilled in the top of the bin and the uh, finned trap catch that we saw earlier on the uh, monitoring trap is then fitted to the bin. And you can see in this slide here that the uh, pheromone attractants are mounted on the yellow finned portion of the trap. Placement of the traps is important. The goal is to intercept beetles as they move into the uh, the uh, planting, the uh, berry planting or the tree fruit planting. And you can see that this is accomplished by maintaining a perimeter, a deployment of traps around the perimeter of the crop field. The uh, placement of these traps in the perimeter also draws beetles out of the planting that might have developed as far as in grassy areas within the planting. But the main goal is to intercept beetles as they move into the planting. This is the incorrect placement of traps. You do not want to place traps within the planting because this will have the effect of drawing more Japanese beetles into the cash crop and not toward it. If enough beetles enter the uh, planting and begin to feed on the crop plant, 
then the uh, benefits of using the pheromones will be overcome just by the sheer volume of beetles feeding on the, on the uh, cash crop. So the goal is to intercept beetles as they move into the planting, not to try to draw them out of the planting in large numbers. As far as mass trapping recommendations based on the work at Lincoln University, first step is to start with monitoring traps in May to get a feel for when Japanese beetle emergence begins. Once the numbers begin to increase in the monitoring traps, it's time to place the mass traps around the planting. The number of traps deployed depends upon the attractiveness of the crop plant to the Japanese beetles. Blueberries, for example, are less attractive than elderberries. The work was done with both blueberries and elderberries. In the case of elderberry, it was found that uh, five yards was needed between the traps. In other words, a more extensive deployment of traps was needed with elderberries than with blueberries, where 20 yards could be allowed between traps. It's also important to allow a buffer between the uh, traps and the crop, and the research suggested a zone of 10 yards between the mass trap uh, installation and the crop. Then, of course, it's important to regularly empty the mass traps. At the peak of Japanese beetle flight, millions of beetles can be caught in a short period of time in a mass trap, and it's important to, to uh, empty these traps and eliminate these beetles. The cost of mass trapping is very competitive uh, based upon the use of, or uh, in comparison to the use of organically approved insecticides. Uh, in 2018, when the uh, study was concluded, again, based upon blueberry with seven traps per acre, the initial cost for the mass traps was $213.50 uh, per acre. Again, that was the, the initial cost for seven traps, and that was a one-time cost. The annual cost for 14 lures uh, is $59.50. The lures will need to be replaced mid-season. So the, uh, the uh, installation would require 14 lures. So the ongoing cost would be about $60 per acre. Then compare that with a cost of, of 12 sprays of an organic insecticide Pyganic uh, at nearly $1,000 per acre. So again, mass trapping is quite cost competitive even considering the labor needed to effectively manage the uh, monitoring traps. That concludes our discussion of Japanese beetle. Now let's turn our attention to the calendar of activities in uh, fruit plantings in Missouri. We'll start with peaches and stone fruits. Uh, we're now moving into the period of time where we're focused on summer pest and disease management, particularly management of brown rot, uh, peach scab, and bacterial leaf spot on peaches. And then the uh, spectrum of insect pests, particularly uh, oriental fruit moth, uh, this is an important time. This is also a time to focus on borer management. Uh, peach tree borer uh, trunk sprays are applied generally in June, or early July. And uh, lesser peach tree sprays typically are not needed if other sprays are used to control pests such as oriental fruit moth. Both borer species can be uh, monitored with pheromone baited traps. Uh, harvest begins with the earliest ripening peaches, typically towards mid to late June in southeast Missouri, and uh, uh, late June and early July as we move further north. The apple and pear um, strategies for, uh, for this time of year focus on summer pest and disease management, particularly management of uh, summer diseases, the various types of leaf spots and fruit rots, and the management of codling moth and other insect pests. The berry calendar uh, with a case of strawberry season, uh, the strawberry season concludes in June with annual plastic culture. The plantings are removed at this point and the uh, raised beds can then be replanted with other crops such as vine crops, vine vegetable crops or flower crops or the planting can be removed entirely and the, uh, the area used for uh, a cover crop or some other uh, productive crop in that site. In the case of matted row perennial strawberry plantings, this is now the time to evaluate vigor and health of the planting and decide if the planting will be kept for another season of production. And if this is the case, then renovation takes place in June. Brambles, uh, blackberries and raspberries, the prime, uh, floricane crop begins in June. Uh, primicane training and, and tipping is underway during this period of time as well. And pest management, particularly Japanese bat, uh, beetle management and spotted wing drosophila management takes place in June. In the case of blueberries, season also begins. The harvest season begins at this point. And pest management, again, Japanese beetle and spotted wing drosophila management begin at this point. With elderberries, if a farmer is harvesting blossoms, the elderberry flowering time is late May and June. So blossom harvest is underway at this point. And pest management, particularly Japanese beetle management, takes place at this point. 
For more information on the management of commercial fruit crops in Missouri, I encourage you to reach out to the regional horticulture specialists who are stationed across Missouri. Locate your, your home county and you can identify who your, your horticulture field specialist is and their contact information is included on this slide. 